So hey everybody, I'm here in the studio and I'm going to show you how to use the extruder. So the extruder is a, a machine that will push pieces of clay through dies or shapes. So some of the shapes um, are designed to be just um, solid shapes and others are a little larger, like this one here, where you would actually take a, a smaller piece uh, of the same shape and nestle it inside something like this so that you would create a hollow tube of form. That's a little more complicated uh, and this would be like a little um, rack that would hold it. Um, that would be a little more complicated than what we're going to do with this project. So they, this kind of fits in here and it would hold this um, center shape here that you would attach on this nut. But for this project, we're just going to keep it simple and we're going to use solid shapes. So um, although we do have a die for flat pieces of clay that would be like strips or bands, I, I worry that this is a little too thin for our purposes. Um, if you were going to work at a smaller scale, that might be possible, but I think it would be easier to simply generate those shapes uh, with a slab roller and cut them out with a yardstick. And I have another video where I showed you how to do that. But for this, I think we're going to use um, the extruder to make coils, okay? And we have two dies that make coils and they're different sizes. These are, some are larger than others. And I think um, I'm going to choose the die with the larger coils um, and I'm going to uh, isolate that coil. Sorry, <laughs> there's too many parts to this demo. With this little rubber um, plate. And what you do is you choose which one you want to use. So um, I think um, I'm going to use the plate that is, uh, excuse me, the, the die that's the second to the largest, this one here. And it's probably three quarters of an inch or so. All right, and then what I do is I block off the shape that I want to use using this little rubber tile. Okay, this die here will fit into a brace, which you have here, all right? And um, it has some little metal tabs that will hold the die in place. So I'm gonna open them up here, and then I'm going to try to fit it down in. Now you'll notice that the dies have two different shapes. This one has kind of a bevel, and that's where you want the clay to go in and then the shape that's going to come out is going to look like the bottom side of the die as it comes through the machine the shaft here and extrudes out the bottom so i'm going to put the beveled side up like this and i'm going to slide these little aluminum tabs over the um maybe i should i'm going to move it slightly so that i can have the tabs on two corners because it's broken it used to have a little window frame around it and we only have like an L shape. So I'm going to just kind of move it here and see if I can get it to fit in this other direction so I can hold it on in two places. Now the clay on top of this will typically hold it in place and you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, but now I'm going to get a screwdriver and we keep the tools here on a magnet that's on the opposite side of the roller here and I'm going to kind of screw it down to hold it it's a little hard for me to do it while I'm holding it here but I'm gonna screw it in so that the tab is holding the die in place and it won't move because I want to make sure that that's gonna block the clay and that the clay will only extrude out of the coil shape that I choose if you don't use this you're gonna get four coils and of different sizes and I don't think that's what you want um, okay so I've screwed it on make sure you put the tools back on the magnet so we don't lose them all right, and the second thing we're going to do is we're going to get our uh, shaft ready. So first we're gonna put the die on it, and then after that we're gonna fill it with clay. All right, so um, the die is gonna go with these ridges facing the chamber itself, because those ridges are gonna fit on the side. And then you have these little cutouts here on the side, and you want those cutouts to line up with the welded squares on the side where these little bolts are going to go in. All right, so I'm going to line them up and it should fit really snugly on here. And then there's one more piece of the frame that has a welded circle on it. And you'll see it, it's, it's um, flush with one side. It's not in the middle. And so you want to make the side that's flush be down so that there's no gap between where the screw goes down or the bolt goes down into the holder. All right, and those line up here on the side on top of the 
welded little squares that are on the side here. And then the bolts drop down in. And there's two. There's one for either side. And so I'm just going to line them up. And then we have um, another tool that's here on our magnet. And it's um, an Allen wrench that's fairly large. And you just put the Allen wrench down in there and screw it in. Now it's important that you have those little aluminum flaps holding the, um, the rubber uh, kind of blocking die on top of the shape you want because otherwise uh, it'll fall off when you have it upside down like this and you're putting it together. All right, so if you have that lined up correctly, you are going to have Sorry, I'm going to tight, tighten this down so I don't get a lot of clay that oozes out. It doesn't have to be super tight, but tight enough. All right, now put this back. Now, when I line this up correctly, you can see that I have this circle here, which is a hole, and it should be on the back left-hand corner. So this is the front side that has um, kind of a, a notice on here that says that if you don't clean it, uh, Larry Legbreaker is going to come get you. <laughs> Uh, and then what you want to do is you're going to um, line that up with a hole that's here in the frame. So I'm not going to move the camera, but you can see it's on the left-hand bottom corner. And then there's a little cotter pin that hangs from it that we use to poke through both this chamber and the frame of the extruder. And that will hold the chamber in place so it won't go sliding up when we move the wheel. Now you can see how the, um, there's a, uh, you can see this in the video here. There's a plunger here that has like a foot on it and that pushes the clay through the machine and we roll it back up all the way up before we put the chamber on. All right, I'm gonna get it all the way up, nice and clean. All right, and now I'm ready to load my clay in the chamber. Now before you load your clay in the chamber, you're gonna wanna use some of this release agent and that's gonna make your life a lot easier terms of cleaning this out because we don't want to leave a lot of clay in here for the next person. It's very unpleasant to have to clean the tool before you get to it. Um, so what you want to do is you want to give it a nice spray, but you don't want to breathe this stuff in. So just kind of let it dissipate a little bit. All right, and now we're ready to put the clay in. So I have um, some fresh clay here, slightly different than the clay that you guys are going to use, but if you're going to build a uh, large scale, we're going to actually make up a special sculpture body that has a little more grog or temper in the clay. And that's better for working larger because it increases, it decreases the shrinkage. It's just a little more user friendly for your work. So the chamber itself is not as big as my lump of clay, so I'm going to have to cut this in half. And then I'll have to reshape it to fit it in. Now your extrusions will fit in there nicely, but you might want to fill it all the way up because um, it's a little less work if you can get um, a as much clay to extrude at one time than having to reload it. I'm just going to make this a little smaller by patting it on the table here, and then I'm going to kind of load it down into the chamber. All right, see if that'll fit. Looks fine. And I actually have quite a lot more space, but it's kind of tricky to um, push it all down. So I'll show you how to reload it, and we'll do the other half after this. All right, so our chamber is all the way up. Make sure that the foot is all the way up. And now I'm ready to go ahead and push the clay, uh, put the chamber onto the frame. Now, I think I'm gonna actually spray the foot of the plunger so I don't have to clean that either. And I'm just gonna take my release agent and do a little bit there. It really does make for the cleanup pretty easy if you've done that ahead of time. Now this can be heavy if you have it all the way filled with clay. It could be 25 pounds or so. So be careful. And I'm just gonna push it on the back of the frame and lift it up. And there's a little lip on the bottom here that's gonna hold the whole chamber. So what you're trying to do is get it up and in and rest it on that lip and that will hold it in place. Now make sure that before you begin to extrude your clay that you take this little cotter pin and slide it through the frame hole in the, in the chamber where you have the clay and also through the back of the, the extruder. And you might have to wiggle it around to get them to line up and get that pin to go in. All right, there we go. And it should be out of the way so that when you do the extrusion, it doesn't get in your way. So you can see that I've gotten myself a board and I've put plastic on it. I like these giant plastic bags that we use as drum liners 
in the trash cans. If you can't find a new one, sometimes I'll just take one because the custodians tend to leave a roll of them in there. Um, but we'll try to get some more plastic rolls like that. And it looks like there's some a little bit on the um, shelf outside of Hayden's office in the window. So really, um, I want it to be fairly flat on my board. So I think I'm just gonna um, take it off here and make sure that I have a nice, yeah, I think I'll, I'll go back to this, kind of turn it inside out on here. Cause it'll be easier to lay it down. Sorry, I hope it's not too loud for the video voicing. Um, okay, so I'm ready to plunge. All right, and you just kind of drive the wheel. Now, make sure you're going the right way. So I'm going the wrong way. If, it, if there's a lot of resistance, you might be going the wrong way, and you don't want to force it because that will actually break the machine. All right, so now I'm going to wheel it around, and pretty soon the clay's going to start to come out. And I think I'm going to move my, um, my board out a little bit so I can make room for the extrusion to come down. Now, some of the, the um, dies that we have are quite large, and if you're making a hollow shape, it, the pressure is going to actually cause it to move and bend as it comes out. So you may want to guide it down. But if you're just making a solid shape, it's fairly easy. Gravity will have it kind of fall down. You don't want it to get too long or it may end up. Um, there we go. Cracking off and falling on the floor and then you have to kind of start over. So my play is a little bit stiff and actually it feels like I'm going to the gym here. Um, so this is a pretty big size coil. If you're gonna work with a coil that's like this three quarters of an inch, you're gonna to need to pinch the clay when you build with it. You're not gonna to wanna to leave it that thick because that would be too thick of a wall probably for this project. Your piece would be so heavy, we're gonna to have to have a, a cart to move it around. Um, so I would recommend that you not leave them quite that thick. So keep that in mind when you choose. And I will work with you on trying to figure out what's gonna be the best construction method for your idea. All right, so I'm just rolling this up. See if I can tilt this down a little bit more so you can see it. All right, and I'm just making kind of a pile here of coil. All right, and then I'm gonna do it again. So I actually think that when you're extruding, it's kind of nice to use clay that's a little bit stiffer um, for extruding because then when you pull them out of the out of the extruder it's it's not as sensitive to your touch so I'm not squishing everything up this is particularly important if you're making a hollow shape because they um, can really get over manipulated quickly so I do I think I might be able to get a little bit more out of here and then we'll load the rest of the clay in all right, so for this project, um, you'll be making a choice either between building with coils or with building with uh, strips or bands. All right, okay. maybe there's still a little bit more in here. Let's see. I want to get most of it out. And then when it feels like there's some resistance, you want to stop pushing, all right? So I'm getting quite a lot of clay here. It's probably going to be my last go around. It's just perfect. It just fits on the board. And then I can continue to go and just build up with another set of coils. So let's go ahead and we'll reload. And you can see how this would happen. Um, so when we're in class, there may be a few of you who want to use the same die shape. And then you can jump right in after the next person. And a couple people can go ahead and extrude without having to clean the whole machine and um, change the dies out. So you, know, you just want to sanitize the, the wheel on the outside and just, just wash your hands. All right, that's our best defense is just washing our hands a lot. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to, it's all the way up, it's resisting. I need to pull the cotter pin here in the back so it's out. And now I'm gonna push up and lift forward and get it out. So push up and lift forward and it's much lighter than it was the first time and it did pretty well so it really isn't stuck to the inside you can see that um, and there's a little bit stuck to the bottom but it released from the foot it's not filled with clay there's a tiny bit of clay here where i probably didn't spray it that well but the release agent worked really nicely all right so i'm going to reload the clay and i think i'm just going to leave the clay that's here i'm not going to clean it out i'm just going to put more in but i actually 
will put a little bit more of the of the release agent on the inside Oops. and on the foot here. So I'm going to try not to spray the clay because I don't want to get that stuff all mixed in with the clay. It's not the end of the world, but it'll probably be a little bit better if I just keep it, if I can, on the metal. You know, you do your best. Okay. So there's a little bit more clay here. This is about 25 pounds of clay. it all up. All of the dyes are going to go in this little basket that lives on this cart that's uh, usually kept underneath the extruder. I just moved it to the side so that I could extrude here. Um, and then you're also going to want to make sure that you wash the foot that pushes the clay through the barrel. And that there is a nail on it with a little bit of tape and you can pull that off, take the, um, the foot off, take the chamber, bring it to the sink, wash them all out with soap and water, clean them all up sanitize them with the bleach spray and then put them back up in here and make sure that you wash out the handle too when you're done. But that's basically how you do it and it's pretty straightforward. I'll probably end up demonstrating it again in class but I'd like you to at least have seen how this works beforehand. Okay, good luck. <laughs>